A lot has happened since the initial planning for this Polar Express layout took place about a year and a half ago. And some of those changes are leading me to think about how I designed it initially and perhaps doing some modifications at this time in order to be able to expand it. Given the space limitations that I have, and almost everybody has space limitations, the only feasible way to expand that I can see is to go up. And that means to add another level above or to build some elevated tracks. The Polar Express passenger train is sitting right now on what was originally envisioned as the passing siding. The passing siding was intended to be a place where I could pull a train, drop some cars, pull the rest of the train on through, hook up some more cars, go around the layout. The thing that's happened here is that I have increased the length of my trains rather significantly. The Polar Express passenger train uh, has uh, grown in length as Lionel has made more cars available, more different kinds of rolling stock available, and as I've added that a new rolling stock. The other siding on the train is in the center of the view right now. This is a dead end siding, and again this was envisioned as a place where I could pull some cars in, decouple them, pull the rest of the train back out, continue to run, or switch out cars between what was on the passing siding and what was on this dead end siding. The reality is it hasn't really worked out that way. Again, in part because of the length of the trains that I'm running. If you take a look at the Polar Express freight train, and I'll zoom out a little bit and let you see that uh, in more length, you can see that it's really taking up more than the full length of the tables at this point in the long direction on the outer loop, uh, track number one. Uh, the caboose is way over there, uh, sitting uh, uh, near the North Pole scene, and then the train continues to extend through the tunnel and continues all the way up to here, uh, more than halfway down the side of the table. So. The sidings haven't worked out the way I envisioned. What I'm thinking about doing is, instead of having either of those as sidings, is making those part of a track number three. And a track number three that ultimately would be elevated. My thinking is at this stage that I would take and after the uh, Polar Express passenger train crosses the Polar Express bridge, which is right there in the center of the picture, once it crosses that bridge, I would start to elevate it and begin to gradually raise that track and continue to raise it as it comes around here. And then there where the passing side or the dead end siding is right now, the elevation would continue uh, to I, so I could get to a point where I could go above that grade crossing right there in the center, raise it up so that I could go above that grade crossing and then circle it back around to rejoin the outer loop but elevated above the outer loop approximately six inches. That's uh, quite a bit of elevation to get. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not I've got enough room to do what I want to do. I need a certain amount of length in track in order to be able to, to build up a grade. Um, I talked with one of the, by email, with one of the good folks at Lionel Collectors Club of America, at lionelcollectors.org, yesterday, and uh, he told me that the Lionel trestles raise the track approximately one half inch for every 10 inches of run, which is a pretty aggressive grade in my estimation. Um, that means that I'd need 110 linear inches in order to go up uh, five and a half inches. That would be kind of the minimum height in order to get above the other train, but I'd really like to go up six, so that means that I would, I would need, really need uh, 120 inches. Um, I can do that if I start raising right 
by that Polar Express bridge, start to come up there, and then continue to go up above that. I really would be interested in advice from anyone that uh, has done this before about how aggressive you can be with a grade and also uh, what your experience has been in building a multiple level layout. Any tips, uh, suggestions that you have for me would be really, really appreciated. In the wiring harness under the tables today, I have room to add uh, track number three circuit. There's wires, unused wires on that harness that I can connect up with a track number uh, three circuit. My thinking is that if I do this, I will not be using a trestle set from Lionel or anybody else, but I will actually cut the wood myself to create supports to raise the track up and begin to bring that up uh, so that I can get the elevation I need. First, uh, my first obstacle is this grade crossing right in the middle of the picture. I want to be able to get above that uh, as close to five inches above it as possible, preferably more. And then I would be ending up cutting across that parking lot and that little hill there to come back and then elevate it over the outer loop of tracks. Um, one of the things that I've uh, learned is that um, a grade and a curve create double strain on the engine. Uh, the locomotive is, has got the, the grade to deal with, gravity holding it back, and then there's also friction associated with going around a curve. So making a curve and a grade at the same time suggests you might need to be a little less aggressive with the with the grade with the elevation that you're building in order to be able to handle the curves as well so that's kind of where i'm thinking at this point is that i would take my passing uh, siding and that would actually become part of track number three and also the dead end siding would become part of track number three and I would start elevating right there at that Polar Express bridge and then I would increase the elevation as I come around the corner there and meet up with the other siding and probably move that one switch back maybe move that switch back 10 inches and then be able to have more room to, to build the grade so that I can get up over that grade crossing and get up over the parking lot and then come back over and have a good elevation by the time I come back and rejoin the uh, where track number one is running but being elevated above track number one minimum of six inches so I really would appreciate any thoughts you have any experience you have in building elevated tracks uh, what are some of the things you've learned what are the comments that you would share with me uh, please add those in the comments below uh, I'm really uh, seriously thinking about doing this it means a big construction project but i think that's my only option for expanding so i look forward to hearing from you uh, please uh, like the video uh, thumbs up down below uh, subscribe if you haven't already and share this video with anybody else you know that might have uh, information that they could share with us as well uh, your comments will be most welcome thanks for watching